Hey guys, it's Mark, author of Red Light Therapy Miracle Medicine. This book is number one right now on Amazon and has been for a year and a half now and counting. This is going to be far more than just another video on red light therapy. You're going to learn everything you could ever want to know on diabetes, where the mainstream went wrong, and how you can treat it by yourself, addressing the root cause of the disease using some simple dietary changes as well as therapies like red light therapy. Over 30 million people in the United States have been diagnosed with diabetes, all of whom were told they have a terminal disease that cannot be cured. They're told that all they can do is manage their symptoms by eating less sugar and getting regular insulin injections. However, as you're about to find out, the root cause of diabetes and how to reverse it has been known scientifically for over 70 years. Obviously, profiting from selling insulin is far more important to the medical industry than reducing humanity's suffering. In 1947, a Nobel Prize winning scientist discovered that overconsumption of polyunsaturated fats can cause diabetes. This means that every time you eat a large amount of polyunsaturated fats like vegetable oil, you're becoming temporarily diabetic and insulin resistant. If you eat enough of these fats, the diabetes metabolism will become chronic. In the decades since this landmark study, researchers have shown in both animals and in humans that eating a diet low in polyunsaturated fat can completely reverse diabetes. In 2001, a paper in the New England Journal of Medicine admitted that type 2 diabetes can be prevented by changes in the lifestyles of high-risk subjects. So contrary to popular belief, diabetes is a metabolic disease, not a genetic one, and it can be completely reversed. In this video, you're going to learn what causes diabetes and how to use treatments like red light therapy and dietary changes to help you safely and effectively prevent or reverse the disease. We've got a lot of information to cover in this presentation, so here is a table of contents for you. First section we're going to go over is the mainstream theory of diabetes. What they claim it is, how it's treated all these things next section i have titled bursting the sugar bubble we're going to talk about carbohydrates and their relation to diabetics the next section i've titled bursting the vegetable oil bubble what is the relationship between vegetable oil and diabetes next section diabetes in the randall cycle very important concept and following that we have the five defining features of diabetes it's not the only five but i've chosen five so we can dig a little deeper and understand what diabetes is then we're going to look at how polyunsaturated fats in particular can cause diabetes the exact mechanisms that are occurring when it does this next section is going to be on how to treat diabetes using red light therapy following this we have more evidence-based treatments for diabetes and we're going to follow that up with a conclusion all right so let's get started here the mainstream theory of diabetes is that it's the inability to use glucose for one of two reasons hence the type 1 and type 2 diabetes classifications. Before we get into the two types, for those who are unaware, insulin is a blood sugar regulating hormone which shuttles glucose into cells for use. So the mainstream theory of type 1 diabetes. In type 1 diabetes, it is claimed that the body has stopped producing insulin. If you ask your doctor why, he will tell you that your immune system has attacked and destroyed the insulin producing beta cells of your pancreas. So basically that it's an autoimmune disease. And if you haven't seen my presentation on autoimmune disease, highly recommend you check that out. Anyway, as a result, instead of being transported into your cells, sugar builds up in the bloodstream. Insulin supplementation is the common treatment. Type 2 diabetes. In type 2 diabetes, it is claimed that the body doesn't produce or use insulin well. So instead of moving into your cells where it's needed for energy, once again, sugar builds up in your bloodstream. According to the Mayo Clinic, and I quote, exactly why this happens is uncertain. So they have no idea what causes this, apparently. So they just say, let's just treat the symptoms. Insulin supplementation and other medical drugs are common treatments. Symptoms of diabetes. Initially, the symptoms are minor, like frequent urination, muscle wasting, and fatigue. But eventually, they progress to many life-threatening conditions, like heart attack, stroke, nerve damage, Alzheimer's disease, organ damage, and cancer. Diagnostic methods for diabetes. If it is found that a person has high blood sugar on a blood test, the doctor assumes that the pancreas is failing to produce enough insulin or the cells have lost sensitivity to insulin. 
Another diagnostic test is a search for ketones in the urine. Anybody who thinks the ketogenic diet is good, listen up for this quote from the Mayo Clinic. If your cells are starved for energy, your body may begin to break down fat. This produces toxic acids known as ketones. Is a cure for diabetes in sight? Despite the use of insulin and other drugs, as well as massive campaigns to imp so-called improve eating habits, both the incidence and mortality from diabetes have been increasing over the past 100 years, especially in children. Bursting the sugar bubble. This is where it gets real interesting. One of the misconceptions about diabetes is that sugar causes it. Assuming that high blood sugar is caused by a lack of insulin or insulin resistance ignores the real cause of elevated blood sugar. This is a quote from Raymond Pete. Contrary to what is popular believed, sugar does not cause type 2 diabetes. Bernardo Husse's work, which won the Nobel Prize in Medicine in 1947 on diabetes, proved polyunsaturated fat's causative role in diabetic conditions. In his experiment, saturated fat in the form of coconut oil was found very protective. Protein and sugar proved protective as well against diabetes, but to a lesser extent. Another interesting thing to note from that study is that mortality on the high coconut oil diet was zero. Is sugar dangerous for diabetics? One common recommendation by doctors to patients with diabetes is to drastically reduce their intake of sugar because, it is claimed, that eating sugar will worsen their condition. But as usual, empirical reality paints an entirely different picture. A number of studies have looked at the effects of high sugar diets as well as carbohydrate restriction in diabetic patients. First, let's look at what happens when you feed sugar to diabetics. It turns out high sugar diets don't worsen blood sugar control or insulin secretion in the diabetic. In 1996, Brazilian scientists wrote that our data suggests that in the short and middle terms, high fructose and sucrose diets do not adversely affect glycemia, lipidemia, or insulin and C-peptide secretion in well-controlled type 2 diabetic subjects. And an American study from the University of Minnesota had similar findings reporting that a high sucrose diet did not adversely affect glycemia or lipidemia in type 2 diabetic subjects. Therefore, if a diabetic eats sugar, it's not going to worsen their condition. So how about sugar restriction in diabetics? Does sugar or carbohydrate restriction benefit a diabetic patient? A 1984 study from the American Journal of Medicine reports that isocaloric sucrose and carbohydrate restriction Below usual daily levels offers no consistent benefit in glycemia or lipid control in overt type 2 diabetics. My friends, it's time to forget everything you know about diabetes. Sugar doesn't cause diabetes or make diabetes worse. In fact, as you're about to find out, sugar is essential for the recovery of a diabetic patient. On to the next section, bursting the vegetable oil bubble. For around 100 years, the damaging effects of polyunsaturated fats, which I may refer to in this presentation as PUFA, P-U-F-A, an acronym for polyunsaturated fatty acids, have been known. In that time, it has been discovered that liquid vegetable oils can cause diabetes. As far back as the 1920s, Dr. S. Sweeney produced reversible diabetes in all of his medical school students by feeding them a high vegetable oil diet for 48 hours. None of the students had previously been diabetic. And in recent years, this research has also been replicated in animals. Scientists from Duke University have been able to cause test animals to develop diabetes simply by feeding them diets high in polyunsaturated fat. Let it be known, vegetable oil and other polyunsaturated fats cause diabetes. And if these fats are the cause of diabetes, what happens when you restrict them in the diet? Well, it turns out in animal studies, restricting fat intake in diabetic animals has shown to reverse type 2 diabetes in a study titled, Low Fat Diet Alone Reverses Type 2 Diabetes in Mice. In humans, clinical studies using low fat diets have also shown complete reversal of the disease. So far, we've established that sugar doesn't cause diabetes and that it's really caused by vegetable oil. If you're wondering how this could be so, the key concept to understand this is called the Randall cycle. In 1963, Philip J. Randall clearly described the inhibition of glucose oxidation by free fatty acids, and it has been confirmed many times since then. When the concentration of fat in the bloodstream is increased by eating fatty foods or by releasing fats from the tissues during stress, in a process called lipolysis, 
the oxidation of sugar is suppressed. Conversely, when an abundant amount of sugar is eaten, fat oxidation is suppressed and sugar oxidation is switched back on. This is why sugar can actually be medicinal for a patient diagnosed with diabetes. So we got a study here from 1996. This isn't the original Philip J. Randall study, but this is one that replicated it and found the same. We have demonstrated that physiological elevations in plasma free fatty acid concentrations inhibit insulin stimulated glucose uptake in a dose dependent manner in normal control subjects and in patients with diabetes. We conclude that elevations of plasma free fatty acids caused insulin resistance and hence may play a significant role in the pathogenesis of insulin resistance in obesity and diabetes. There are many signatures in the body that provide evidence a person is in a diabetic state. Below are a list of five of them so we can get an even deeper understanding of what is happening in a person with diabetes. In order to prevent or reverse a disease, it's critical to understand what that disease is. First feature is hypothyroidism. Liver cells require glucose to convert T4 to the active thyroid hormone known as T3, so diabetics become hypothyroid by default. Feature number two, increased oxidative stress. Evidence has accumulated indicating that the generation of reactive oxygen species, or oxidative stress, may play an important role in the etiology of diabetic complications. Feature number three, increased lactic acid or lactate. Since the use of blood sugar is blocked in diabetes, the body ends up converting it to lactic acid. Feature number four is increased blood glucose and inability to use sugar. Feature number five is impaired insulin secretion. Insulin is secreted by beta cells of the pancreas. and people with diabetes, the beta cell to become damaged and insulin secretion is suppressed or reduced. Now we're going to line up those five features of diabetes beside the effects of polyunsaturated fats. So in a sense, we're putting the theory that diabetes is caused by polyunsaturated fats to the test here. We'll see if it passes. So hypothyroidism. Indeed, PUFA can cause hypothyroidism in a number of ways. One of the ways is that it blocks the conversion of thyroid hormone in the liver. Feature number two is oxidative stress. An Italian study from the University of Naples wrote, in conclusion, fasting plasma free fatty acids seems to enhance oxidative stress which might contribute to the disruptive effects of plasma-free fatty acids on insulin-mediated glucose uptake. Third feature of diabetes is increased lactic acid. By inhibiting respiration within the mitochondria of cells, PUFA causes increased lactic acid production. Feature number four of diabetes is impaired glucose use. A 1991 study from the Helsinki University Hospital in Finland found that polyunsaturated fatty acids block the oxidation of glucose by cells via the Randall cycle, and the rise in blood sugar is the result. Fifth feature of diabetes is impaired insulin secretion. A group of French scientists wrote, studies performed in the rat suggest that impaired glucose-induced insulin secretion could also be related to chronic exposure of pancreatic beta cells to elevated plasma-free fatty acid levels. Another study found polyunsaturated fat impairs glucose-stimulated insulin secretion and saturated fat enhances it. So there we go. We've shown that the unsaturated fats can cause every single of those five defining features of diabetes. Now let's use this same list and pair it up with red light therapy to see if it can heal. Number one, hypothyroidism. Red light therapy does improve thyroid function according to many studies. Here's one of them. These findings suggest that red light therapy was effective at improving thyroid function, a Brazilian study reported in 2013. Feature of diabetes number two, oxidative stress. Red light therapy reduces oxidative stress by acting as a potent antioxidant and maintaining a high level of glucose oxidation within the mitochondria. Another big green check mark. Feature of diabetes number three is increased lactic acid. Can red light therapy help reduce lactic acid. A 2015 study from the Universidad Federal de Sao Paulo in Santos, Brazil found that by lowering lactic acid production during exercise, near-infrared laser therapy can help stimulate faster recovery. Fourth feature of diabetes, impaired glucose use. In 2015, Iranian scientists studied the effects of red light on glucose use in type 2 diabetic patients and concluded, 
Comparing before and after laser therapy showed a significant decrease in glucose level. Big green check mark. Impaired insulin secretion, fifth feature of diabetes. This one's pretty amazing. A 1990 study found that red light stimulates regeneration of pancreatic beta cells in type 2 diabetic patients, even in advanced cases. So even in advanced diabetes, the red light, by shining that on the beta cells of the pancreas, will stimulate their regeneration, thus stimulating healthy cells that can once again secrete insulin. And there you go. All five of those features of diabetes can help be restored and corrected using red light therapy. Now, how about some more evidence-based treatments of diabetes? Based on scientific empirical data, logic and reason, here's how one can treat the root cause of diabetes. There are two ways to apply the Randall cycle for the treatment of diabetes. The first is to lower levels of free fatty acids within the bloodstream, which a number of studies have called a promising approach to the treatment of diabetes. Here's a quote from one now. These persuasive data support a link between free fatty acid reduction and improved insulin sensitivity and mitochondrial ATP production. The second way to apply the Randall cycle for the treatment of diabetes is to increase levels of sugar in the bloodstream. To lower levels of free fatty acids within the bloodstream, we have two great options. We do this, one, by eating less polyunsaturated fats, by replacing vegetable oils in our diet with coconut oil and butter, and two, by inhibiting the release of free fatty acids from our tissues during stress. Red light therapy, it turns out, is a potent inhibitor of lipolysis. The drug aspirin and the vitamin niacinamide are two other ways to inhibit lipolysis. Step two is to increase levels of sugar within the bloodstream. And for this, here's a quote from Dr. Raymond Pete. Sucrose and ripe fruits keep PUFA in storage, lower cortisol, and support thyroid function and serve as protective foods for the diabetic. Ripe fruits also tend to be less glycemic than complex carbohydrates like pastas, cereals, and breads and also contain potassium, which has insulin-like function. These sugars have also shown beneficial in repairing B-cell function of the pancreas, which secrete insulin. Let's wrap things up here with a conclusion. With millions of patients spending money on insulin, insulin sales are one of the many cash cows of the medical industry. And despite the use of insulin and other drugs, as well as massive campaigns to improve food choices, and despite the use of insulin and other drugs, as well as massive campaigns to, in quotes, improve food choices, both the incidence and mortality from diabetes have been increasing over the past 100 years, especially in children. After looking at the scientific evidence, it becomes clear that what the medical culture tells us about diabetes is almost entirely false. Some of the many truths we've unearthed in this presentation include, sugar does not cause diabetes. High sugar diets do not make diabetic patients worse. Avoiding sugar does not improve the health of diabetics. Eating too much polyunsaturated fat can cause diabetes. And restricting polyunsaturated fat intake can completely reverse the disease in human patients. Rather than being dependent on the medical establishment for the rest of their lives, diabetic patients now have an evidence-based treatment option that will address the root cause of their condition. By lowering levels of free fatty acids in the bloodstream using treatments like red light therapy, aspirin, and niacinamide, and elevating blood sugar levels by consuming ripe fruit, oxidation of glucose can be switched back on to safely restore insulin sensitivity and glucose use by all cells and tissues. I'm Mark from End All Disease. If you enjoyed this presentation, please share it with someone you love. And for the show notes and to sign up for our mailing list so you never miss a new video article or any news, on all the things I'm up to, go to endalldisease.com slash episode 20. And if you want to try red light therapy for yourself, we've got the handheld light, the body light mini, and the full body light for the ultimate red light therapy experience. Visit endalldisease.com slash store. And to read all three of my best-selling books, uh, check out endalldisease.com slash books. I promise you, you will love all three of them. And I want to thank you again for listening. If you made it this far, you are awesome. I hope you learned something great from this and found it valuable and that it changes your life for the better in some way.